Hi everyone! This is Ms. Leia and in this video, we're going to solve a sample problem involving concave mirrors. To start, this is the summary of the equations that are needed in this particular topic and just in case you're wondering where they came from because I forgot to mention this in the previous video, they're actually derived using the concept of similar triangles in geometry while referring to the ray diagram. But for the purpose of this video, we're not going to expound that further. So let's proceed with the sample problem. A 1.50 cm high perfume cap is placed 20 cm from a concave mirror with a radius of curvature 30 cm. Determine the position of the image and its size. So just like any other physics problem, the first thing we're going to do is to write down the given. So the height of the object is 1.50 cm based on the problem and because it is placed 20 cm from a concave mirror, 20 cm would be the object distance or the distance of the object away from the mirror. Next, we have the radius of curvature which is 30 cm and we will retain the positive sign because it's a concave mirror, right? And radius of curvature is positive if you have a concave mirror. Also, focal length is 15 cm, although it's not directly stated. But remember that if you know the radius of curvature, half of that is the focal length. And then, we decided to write it down because in the mirror equation, what appears is actually the focal length. In the one that I introduced, although it's fine if you want to express the mirror equation in terms of r. But for the one that we have in this particular slide, we're going to have the focal point, point in the mirror equation as well as in the list of given. Okay? So for the required to find, we have d sub i or the position of the image, right? Because the position of the image as well as image distance actually mean the same thing physically, although, although they're using different terms, distance, position. But physically speaking, they refer to the same thing. And then for the solution, okay, we have the mirror equation and it's obviously gonna work, right? Because d sub i, which is the RTF, is present and d sub o and focal length are actually known in the problem. And then if you substitute the given, we're going to have this. And since we want to isolate d sub i, we have to transpose 1 over 20 on the right side of the equation. So we're going to have this. And once again, when you transpose, it will take the opposite sign. Now at this point, you may use your calculator to perform this operation using the fraction functions. But if you don't want to do that, let's say you want to try doing it manually because you want to be independent from a calculator, what you can do is to use the grade school mathematics approach for subtracting fractions that you learned a couple of years ago. And the first thing you have to do is to get the LCD of 15 and 20 centimeters, which is 60 centimeters, okay? So the LCD or the least common denominator is the smallest number, which is divisible by both 15 and 20 and in this case it's 60. In this video I don't want to elaborate how to get the LCD but you may study on your own for you to remember how LCD is being obtained for a certain given. So for 15 and 20 the LCD is 60 and the next thing we're going to do is to do 60 centimeters divided by 15 centimeters times 1 and 60 over 15 times 1 is actually 4. Next 60 divided by 20 times 1 will give us 3. And then we just need to affix the minus sign from here. In case you're wondering, wait, what's going on, Ms. Leia? Why are you doing 60 divided by 15? That's the procedure in, in subtracting these fractions manually. So 60 over 15 times 1, and then 60 divided by the denominator again times the numerator. That's it. Okay, And then 4 minus 3 is 1, so you're going to have this. And because you see that d sub i is a denominator here and you want it to be on top, all we need to do is to flip the equation vertically. So we're going to have d over i, and d, d sub i rather, equals 60 centimeter, and they both have 1 as their denominator. But of course, we all know that that would be simply said as d sub i equals 60 centimeters. Now we're going to go back to that after solving for letter B. So for now, let's solve for the size next. And then we'll go back to what this number physically means later on. Okay, now for the size, 
uh, same scenario, so those are still the same set of given, but we're adding the D sub I because we solve for it in part A. Although we, may, we might not be not very sure if 60 centimeter is in fact correct because we only solve for it, but actually in most optics problem, whatever you solve for in an earlier required to find is oftentimes used for you to be successful in solving the next one. So let's consider this for now. And then the required to find is the size, or in other terms, it's the image height. Okay, so the first thing that should come to our mind would actually be this equation, right? Because h sub i is present, and that's the RTF. But the problem is, although you have h sub o in the given, we actually don't know m. So this cannot be fully functional, right? So we need some help with some other equation. Now let's think of the mirror equation. Okay, it, it looks useless because first thing, I don't see h sub i there and there's nothing in the mirror equation that can be directly related with this one. So let's forget about that. Okay, the other equation is this. If you remember, we have a second magnification equation and it looks like this. Okay, does it look useful? In fact, yes, because if these two expressions are both equivalent to m, we can actually equate them, right? So if m and m are just the same thing, then these two expressions that are both describing magnification can be equated. So nothing bloody. It's simply because they're both equivalent to magnification, so you can equate them in a single equation, and it will look something like this. Okay, does that equation look useful? Yes, because h sub i, which is the RTF, is there. And all these variables, if you haven't noticed, are actually known. We know d sub i, we know h sub o, and we also know d sub o. Okay, now, of course, we want this equation to look linear, right? We don't want it to be in fractional form. So we're going to do simple cross multiplication so it will be linear. So d sub o times h sub i will give us this, and then h sub o times negative d sub i will give us this. Of course, you can switch this to you can switch this to, right? Commutative property of multiplication. And then let's isolate h sub i by dividing both sides of the equation by d sub o. So we're going to have this, right? Okay, so we just divided both sides by d sub o to cancel this and isolate h sub i. So we're going to have this. And then for the substitution, okay, you're going to have d sub i is 60 and then the negative sign should be affixed. So there you have it. And then the rest is just plug in 1.5 centimeters for the object height, 20 centimeters for the object distance. And then if you do the math, if you simplify that, you're going to have h sub i or image height equals negative 4.5 centimeters. That's all. Now, at this point, I'd like us to make sense of those numbers. Okay. So first is for part A, we got d sub i equals 60 centimeter. Now take note of this. If d sub i is positive, it means that the image is formed in front of the mirror, and therefore, it's a real image. So that's how you will physically interpret this answer. And for b, image height is negative 4.5 centimeter. Now, for image height, in, in the summary of sign conventions, if you remember, if it's negative, it simply means that the image is inverted, okay? And because it, it is 4.5 centimeters, it means that it is magnified because the actual object is only 1.50 centimeters, but the image is 4.5 centimeters. So the magnification is actually 3, right? Or negative 3 to be more particular with the sign because the image height is triple the size of the object, okay? So yeah, the negative sign means it is inverted. And in fact, if you think of the ray diagram that we've done before in the previous video, it's actually consistent with these numbers because, look, if this is your ray diagram and the radius of curvature is, let's say, 30 centimeters, as stated in the problem, if you put the perfume cap or whatever object it is at the 20 centimeter mark, it would be right here, right? It would be between the center of curvature and the focal point because the focal point would be at the 15 centimeter mark if this is 30. So, 20 centimeters would be here. And what it tells us is that if the object is in, in between C and F, the image that will be formed based on the ray diagram would look like this. 
And look at the consistency. It's actually inverted, consistent with the negative sign of the image height. It's also real because it's in front of the reflective side of the mirror and it's formed by actual reflected rays that are intersecting. So it's consistent with this one. It's a real image. B sub i is positive, okay? Apart from that, it's bigger than the object, right? The image is bigger than the object. And it's seen here because the image height is 4.5 centimeters, while the object height is only 1.5 centimeters. So the ray diagram is consistent with our answers, right? Because in fact, the mirror equation and the magnification equations are all derived from a ray diagram. So this, these answers make sense. They have to agree. In fact, for concave mirrors, whenever you position the object between C and F, the image characteristics will be enlarged, real, and inverted. And because concave mirrors can form enlarged images, unlike convex, which can only produce minimized or diminished images, they're actually used for certain purposes. Let's say, for example, when you want to shave your gorgeous face, you'd like to closely see your pores so that you can see if they're perfectly clean, if you've shaved the hair, the facial hair well enough. So shaving mirror are actually using concave mirrors because concave mirrors can somehow enlarge at a certain extent depending on the radius of curvature and the image location as well and other variables. Okay? Same for dental mirror. Of course, your dentist has to clearly see if there are cavities, plaques, etc., whatever it is in your teeth. Okay, so uh, yeah, in, in terms of magnification, concave mirrors are actually functional. Okay, apart from that, it's, it's not just about for magnification, but in fact, concave mirrors can also redirect light, right? Because in, in car headlights, in fact, there, there's actually a concave mirror installed because if it's just a light bulb, you know, when you turn it on, the light will be scattered everywhere. It's not going to be focused on a single direction. Something you'd like to have if you, if you want to see a clear pathway, right? So the purpose of that concave mirror is that when the light rays from the bulb hit the concave mirror, what will happen is that the light rays will be re redirected towards a certain direction such that those light rays will be parallel with one another. And that's a good thing because those parallel light rays will actually help you clearly illuminate the path where you are headed to, okay? So in accordance with the law of reflection, concave mirrors will just reflect those light rays in a certain direction such that they can be focused on where you are headed to or where your car is headed to. It's the same principle that works for flashlights, actually. Okay, so I hope that you learned something from that video. In the next video, we're going to solve a problem involving a context mirror. But for this one, that's all. Have a great day.